So uh, I'd like to uh, thank the uh, uh, Professor Papadopoulos for suggesting to speak here and then uh, organizers to allow me to speak uh, in this uh, beautiful city and with a very proud tradition of cultures, especially in mathematics. Uh, Atanasia took me to the uh, graveyard of Euler uh, a few days ago and, and it was a beautiful uh, spot. So, um, so thank you very much. And I understand that you, your mind is almost in the holiday season. <laughs> so, so thank you for being here. I try not to bore you as much as I can. So um, today I'd like to talk about this uh, project I've been working with uh, Gilbert Weinstein and Marcus Curry. And then uh, last year we asked for uh, help of Yukio Matsumoto, who is a colleague of mine uh, in Tokyo, uh, who is a, a specialist in four-dimensional topology. Um, and and so, so at the very end, I'll, I'll mention uh, the things we, we did with uh, Yukio. But uh, let, let me uh, start with the project we've been working on for the last three, four years on the five-dimensional black hole spacetime. And, and then actually, it's not just any five-dimensional black hole spacetime, but it's, it's a stationary with some symmetry. Okay, so, so stationary is a time symmetry, and then we, add, uh, we additionally we impose two space time symmetry, two axial symmetry, which is uh, the U1 square uh, isometry group uh, being there. So that's the, the situation. So let me start from the very beginning. Uh, I, I'm, I'm a geometric analyst, so I'm not trained in, in physics uh, in, in, a, in, a, in a proper manner. But so, 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 uh, so, so I understand that if you haven't seen the Einstein equation in, 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 in detail, then uh, it was like that uh, 10, 15 years ago for me. So, so the Einstein equation is an equation where uh, satisfied by a Lorentzian metric defined on n-dimensional manifold. Okay? So Lorentzian means that you, can, you have a one, minus one, uh, uh, one spot for minus one, and then the rest is one, 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 one. You can, you can diagonalize uh, uh, with certain coordinate system. And then that's the Einstein equation. So this RAB is a Ricci curvature, and R is the scalar curvature, which is the trace of this uh, uh, with respect to G. And then G is the Lorentzian. And then TAB is so-called stress energy tensor. So today I mentioned here that the, I, 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 we, we, we only talk about this vacuum case when the, the right-hand side is equal to zero, so-called the vacuum Einstein equation. This Einstein tensor being equal to zero. Okay, so that's a, that's a, the vacuum Einstein equation. I call it VEE, -E, vacuum Einstein equation, VEE, -E, which is this. And then this is, uh, that didn't come from nowhere. It actually, it, it's called uh, Einstein Hilbert action because Hilbert had pointed out that the, uh, this is the Euler Lagrange equation of this uh, f integral functional, where the integrand is a scalar curvature of this Lorentzian manifold, Lorentzian metric, and you have Lagrangian when you have a non gravitational matter. Okay, so the, they call it, this is the geometry side, that's the physics side, because this is de determined by the shape and this is determined by gas and then uh, other fields like electromagnetic magnetic fields and things like that. So, so today we have nothing on the right hand side, okay? And if you look at this, uh, you take a trace of the, uh, the Einstein equation with respect to GAB again, then, then that implies the scalar coverage is equal to zero. So you substitute zero here, then you are left with this Ricci equal to zero. So uh, naively, Einstein thought that this was the Einstein equation, but uh, uh, this was the wrong equation, turns out, because it doesn't have the diffeomorphism invariance. So, so he had to, he had to, he had to, uh, uh, to, to, to mend it uh, with the help from uh, Marcel Grossman. But anyway, geometrically, we're looking for Lorentzian metric, which is Ricci flat. Okay? So you see that the curvature tensor is equal to zero tells you the rigidity means that the only thing you can have is a Minkowski space. Okay, so so that's the end of the story. So the second simplest question, uh, simplest equation satisfied the by, by the curvature tensor is a Ricci is equal to zero. So you think you think that the Einstein equation is something very complicated, but actually the Einstein equation is the second simplest equation you can think of in geometry, albeit it's a Lorentzian setting. Okay, so today what we are going to do is to to to, to to introduce an approach to find how to find G uh, satisfying this Ricci flat condition. 
So uh, let me start from the very beginning. So the Minkowski metric is this. So, so I, I, I've written this way. So it's, it's minus dt square, mi minus d, dt square, uh, plus d phi square, uh, so, sorry, rho square d phi square plus d rho square plus dz square. So you see that rho square d phi square plus d rho square is a two-dimensional polar coordinate. Okay, and then I have z direction, uh, which is up and down. So this is the, the, just the so so the, if you forget the dt part, this is just a cylindrical coordinate system for R three. Okay, and then I add minus dt square to it, and then you get the Minkowski metric. Okay, I write it, it the, uh, this minus one and rho square in this way. Okay, so that the uh, u naught becomes zero, and then u one becomes log rho. So log rho, as everybody knows, is uh, the famous Green function for R two. Okay, which blows up at the origin. The pole is at the origin. Okay, so the the lesson uh, I'm I'm kind of uh, I'm being didactic here. The lesson here is that the the you you have this this uh, this cylindrical coordinate system, and then you have this uh, coordinate singularity, which is the z-axis. Okay, so z-axis is uh, is exactly the blow-up behavior of the Green function. Okay, so we are we are we are we are letting this u1 blows blows up to minus blows down to minus infinity, uh, where this uh, the uh, phi action you have this this phi the dd phi isometry uh, uh, killing vector field. The norm of dd phi killing vector field is going down to zero as you approach to z because this is a fixed point set of this rotation. Okay. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm saying, so I, I, so this, I'm saying something's very uh, stupid. I'm saying that zero is equal to e to the log low. Okay, uh, e to yeah, zero is equal to the e to the minus infinity. <laughs> zero is equal to e to the minus infinity, and then so so that the the the, the z axis is identified as a pole of the of the Green function. Okay. So Hellman Weil comes uh, 1917. Uh, he was in cl very close contact with Einstein, uh, he, who published the uh, uh, general uh, relativity paper in 1916. So the next year, he was teaching a class in uh, ETH on geometry, and then he was teaching a general relativity. So, so, and then one of the things he did is that he, uh, so, so a few months after uh, Einstein uh, uh, showed the, uh, uh, the Einstein equation, the Schwarzschild came up with an exact solution called Schwarzschild metric, which is this. So this is the, the most famous expression of Schwarzschild metric. Uh, f only a few months after Einstein's paper, but th the paper hadn't even appeared. He, he, uh, Einstein gave a talk and then uh, Schwarzschild went back home and came up with this, uh, this, this solution. Uh, and then. Uh, then you have this, so, so, so the Weil, what Weil did is that he wanted to write this down in a, in, in a kind of cylindrical coordinate system. Okay? So you see that it's a bit of an uh, uh, underkill because this is a spherical symmetric. You have this uh, black hole, S2 black hole, and then you have this uh, do, uh, domain of outer communication. So you have this uh, spherical symmetry, SO, uh, uh, SO3 symmetry. Okay, but then uh, he's imposing this uh, the the U1 symmetry. So I, I, he's picking up this uh, particular uh, sub subgroup of this full symmetry group of Schwarzschild solution, which is the axial symmetry. Okay, so that the uh, z axis is fixed once again. So so you see that when v is equal to one and then sigma is equal to zero, you're reduced to the uh, the Minkowski space. Okay, Minkowski metric. But then in in but then uh, he realized that you can write this equation down in this form. So if you set v is equal to e to the u, then the Ricci flat condition, this is the vacuum Einstein equation, becomes u being harmonic and sigma, which is a conformal factor here, uh, satisfying these two equations. And those two equations are is, it, it, it's the same as this, okay? And this is the quadrature, and you can get the potential of sigma provided that this u satisfies this equation. So the harmonicity of U is an integrability condition for this quadrature. So therefore, the, the punchline is if you can find a harmonic function, then you can solve this uh, Einstein equation. Okay? And then that's what this Schwarzschild metric is. So, so what he did is that he, uh, so I, I'll, let me say the same thing again in a different slide. So what it, in other words, the vacuum Einstein equation uh, uh, satisfying the Schwarzschild metric written in the form of this is that the, uh, I guess it's satisfied, so, right? The English is, is, is wrong. Satisfied by the, uh, the Schwarzschild metric 
is, is, so you have a two symmetry. One is a time symmetry. You have a time symmetry. So everything here depend, depends on rho and z only. There's no v and sigma uh, is dependent on rho and z, but not t or phi. Okay? So that means that you have a symmetry in t direction, you have a symmetry in, in phi direction. Okay? And then, so, right, so, and then u determines the, g, and, and also this, this v, okay? Uh, v is the same as u. So you see, u and v are related by this, okay? So, so this v here, v here determines if you go around, so phi changes from 0 to 2 pi. If you go around the integral curve of dd phi, then you get the, you, you get the, le the, the length of the curve, the, the simple cross curve, and that's de determined by the, the size of v. So in that sense, that the, the u determines the, 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 the norm of this, this killing vector field. And then, uh, and, and then you, what you have is that you have this sy uh, symmetry, time symmetry and axial symmetry, and you have these three variables, okay? So one can, one can uh, you, you use this as a coordinate system for the space-time, and then the Einstein metric can be written in this form. So that the Lorentzian metric is, 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 it can be written in this form. Uh, so this is, a rho z, this is a metric on rho z plane, okay? This is a metric on rho z plane. And then you have this uh, symmetry. You have this time symmetry, and you have this U1 symmetry, and, uh, and the, the metric uh, restricted to the fiber of those two uh, symmetric group is this two by two matrix GIJ. And GIJ looks like this, right? So you just read off this in, a, uh, in terms of bilinear form. And then it's like this, okay? So this, uh, this is what I'm, I'm, I'm repeating what I, what I did here. This, this is something stupid, but then I, I'll do something, the same thing here, except that the, uh, here it's a bit more complicated. So you see that the, uh, I'm, I'm writing this uh, minus d squared as e to the 2 u to, to u naught, and then uh, e to the 2 u1 to be this 2, uh, two, two spot, okay? And then you get this uh, u0 and u1 are uh, two harmonic functions. Once again, it's a two harmonic functions, and then this turns out to be the, uh, what you see when you take the, uh, the physics class in, in E and M. So it's, uh, it's the origin origin and mu and minus mu, mu and minus mu. So, so you, you see that this is the, this is the, uh, this is log low. So you see that the log low is the, the potential when the, you have a charge, you have a charge, uh, you have a rod charged evenly. And then uh, if, you, if you look at the, 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 the strength of the field, at this point, uh, rho away from this, this charged rod, then log rho is a potential, okay? And then this thing, this quantity, is, 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 is when you have a charged rod between minus mu and mu, okay? Minus mu and mu, uh, unit charge. And then you, 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 you look at this, you, you pick a point here, and then you, you measure the, 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 the strength of the field uh, in terms of electric potential, and then this quantity, this quantity is, is, is this, okay? And how about this? Well, this is log low, which is the, 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 this even distribution, which appeared in Minkowski space, and then you, 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 you naught, which is this, right? So this is, this is u naught, and this is u1. What's u1? u1 is that the, uh, you just subtract this picture from that, and you're left with this, okay? So, so you see that the, uh, uh, you have this evenly charged rod, except that you have this gap, okay? You have this gap, and then that exactly tells you the, the, uh, the uh, uh, Schwarzschild metric, uh, which appears here. Okay, so so what Weil had noticed is that you can you can you can not only it's it's uh, the Schwarzschild metric is described as a harmonic function, but it's a harmonic function appearing from this uh, very physical uh, uh, elementary model. Okay, so the charged rod tells you uh, so charged rod describing the location of this is a, the event horizon, uh, the black hole horizon, uh, and then that gives you exactly the uh, the Schwarzschild metric. 
Okay, so let me, uh, if you haven't seen the Einstein equation, uh, so this is the picture I drew uh, of the, uh, of the, the Schwarzschild space-time. So you see that the, uh, so the slice is uh, the slice you get by f freezing time, t, p, t equal to zero slice. And then uh, the, the entire space is a space-time. So if you go, this, if you, the slice goes up and down, you get the space-time. And then in the space-time, I drew in yellow the light cones. So the light cones are where the, at, the, at the vertex of the cone, the uh, light is emitted. And then it propagates, OK? And then uh, Schwarzschild metric has the Schwarzschild uh, space-time has a, the, the gravitational collapse, which is this wiggly line in the middle. So that's where the, the gravitational collapse is happening. So the things are being attracted to that, that singularity. Okay, but what happens is that the uh, uh, I have this cylinder, the red cylinder, and then that red cylinder signifies the fact that the uh, when uh, light is emitted here, then light never gets out of the cylinder. Because, because this, the, the surface, a point on the cylinder is, is, is exactly where the light uh, propagates along the cylinder. And if you're inside the cylinder, it uh, pro pro propagates towards the center. Okay? When you're outside, then you can, you can, it, it spreads like this. So you're very far away from the, the gravitational uh, collapse, then the light cone looks like that of the Minkowski space. Okay, so so you see that as you approach uh, as you approach to the singularity, the light cone tilts and tilts, and then the, this cylinder is signifies the region of black hole because whatever happens inside of the cylinder, you never get to observe it outside. Okay, so the outside of the cylinder is called domain of uh, outer communication, and then the, the 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 boundary of this region is called black hole or event horizon. And, and so, so, and then it turns out that the, what I'm saying here, this dotted, dotted line corresponds to this circle, okay? And then, uh, uh, so you see, I, I have a U1, U, U1 symmetry here. So if I kill the U1 symmetry, you, you, you're left with this half space model. And then actually, it, 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 it should look like this. You have this, and you have this semicircle, and go down. But I'm, I'm mapping by Riemann mapping to a half space. Okay, so this is a conformal picture of that, uh, modeled out by U1. Um, so, so that's the, uh, the, uh, the, what Vile did. So Vile had described the, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the Schwarzschild metric, Schwarzschild metric, which is this in physics book, uh, in this form, and it's modeled over the half plane, uh, conformally model. So this is the isothermal coordinate, conformally model on the half plane. And then, uh, then this GIJ tells you uh, the, the geometry of the isometry fiber. So you have, you have two symmetry, time symmetry and U1 symmetry. And then, so that's the, uh, this two by two matrix is telling you. Okay. So, uh, right. And then, uh, so I, I want to uh, be didactic again. So the axial symmetry, so in this case, the, the symmetry is here and there. So the black hole is not axial symmetry. Nothing is fixed. Uh, uh, the, the axial symmetry is where the blow up behavior of the Green's function. So if you look at this, uh, if you look at uh, this function, U1, it's blowing down to minus infinity exactly on this part and that part. So there should be too many locks, right? There should, shouldn't be lock U is not. Ah, yes, thank you, thank you. I, I, there's no log log, yeah, there's, <laughs> yeah. So, so, so get rid of this log and then get rid of this log. Yeah, thank you. Uh, right. So, and then, uh, right. So you see that the, uh, uh, here, what happens is that the, uh, the, the uh, as you approach to this point, then th this uh, DD5 uh, killing vector field, the norm, norm of DD5 killing vector field goes to zero. And then as you approach here, the same thing. As you approach here, what happens is that the norm of DDT uh, approaches to zero. And that's, that's this, this red uh, vertical arrow. So the, uh, the black hole horizon is known to be a ruled surface, ruled by uh, light-like geodesics. Okay? But light-like geodesics has a velocity vector which is null. Zero, zero, the norm zero. So you, you can think of this as the, uh, the fixed point set of U1, fixed point set of U1, and you can think of the point on the horizon to be the fixed point set of this R1 time translation. Okay. So, so, so that's the, uh, 
uh, the, 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 the situation. You see that the, if you write the Lorentzian metric in half space and then uh, this, this, this uh, isometry group thing, this GIJ 2 by 2 matrix contains the uh, information about how the, 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 uh, the topology and the geometry is encoded. Okay, so, right, so this is the, 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 the recap. So the rod is called axis rod, representing the, the fixed point of the U1, and then the killing vector goes to zero, okay? U1 for the Schwarzschild matrix is green function whose poles are evenly distributed over the axis rod. And then rod is called the horizon rod, and is a minimal surface. Okay, so, uh, let me say something here that you see that the, a point on the half space is representing U1. Actually, it's, you have time, but then just forget the time. Everything, everything looks the same in time direction. So, so for now, let's forget time, U1. So this is, you have S1. So at each point geometrically is, is S1, okay? And then what happens is that as you approach to this point, you have uh, S1 collapses. It's a vanishing cycle. It goes to zero, okay? And it's zero. But what ha what's happening here is those are, nothing is happening. That's nothing wrong with S1. So you have, you have S1, 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 S1. But this point is that S1 has gone down to, to point. This one is that S1 has gone down to point. So what you have here is S2. So that's the, the, the horizon, okay? So, so you see that the, uh, the uh, and then it turns out that this is, uh, if you look at the Riemannian geometry of the slice, the, the section of the black hole, uh, black hole area is a minimal surface. You can write it down, the, uh, it, it looks like this. The geometry of this, uh, this slice looks like this. And then you see that the, the origin is a puncture. So that puncture is actually, it's a, an end. And then you have this, flat end if you go away from uh, the uh, gravitational collapse. So, so, and in the middle you have this waste, which is the minimal surface here. Okay. Okay. Now, so today what I'd like to talk about is that the, uh, uh, the bi, bi axis, axis, axis symmetric stationary solutions. So uh, what I do is that in, in, in addition to time symmetry and in addition to the axial symmetry, I add one more axial symmetry, okay? And in five dimension, and G is Lorentzian, okay? So the isometry group contains a Lie group R cross U1 square, okay? And then what's interesting is that, like I just explained, in 3 plus 1 uh, stationary black hole horizon is known to be always uh, uh, S2, okay? The, the, reason, <laughs> the reason uses gauss bonnet and it's done by uh, uh, Stephen Hawking uh, is, but, but you can see topologically this is the, the only uh, uh, possibility because you, the only thing you can go down to zero is S1. Okay, and then if, it, if S1 doesn't collapse, then what you have is a, is, is a foliation by S1. So, so this is a singular foliation uh, giving you the S2, and that's the, uh, uh, the, the only black hole horizon you can, you can expect. But in, in 4 plus 1, what, what's interesting is that the galloway shane has, has shown that under the, the vacuum Einstein equation, or actually much more general situation, uh, the, uh, the three manifold, so, so this is a two-manifold. Two the black hole horizon is a two-dimensional, uh, but in five-dimension, the so in five-dimension, this cylinder is is one dimension up. So if you take the uh, section, uh, section it becomes a uh, three-dimensional manifold. Okay, the three-dimensional manifold is of positive Yamabe type. So it has to be a differentiable manifold on which you can put a metric of positive scalar curvature. I'm not saying that the first, uh, first, fundament the first fundamental form is of positive scalar curvature. You can put a positive scalar curvature metric. Uh, uh, and, so, so, and then uh, if you impose the, the, the condition that the manifold has this symmetry, the space-time has this symmetry, then Horanz and Yazajiev has shown that the three manifold has to be one of this list. S3, as you expect, but also you can have this S1 cross S2 or RP3, or this is uh, lens. So I always uh, um, uh, write the wrong thing. It's LPQ. It, uh, Q, Q doesn't need to be one. So this is the lens space. And then RP3 is, of course, L21. 
Okay, so I'm 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 saying I'm 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 I'm, I'm being uh, didactic here. So RP3 is just nothing but L21. So, but anyway, so in 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 three plus one, S2 is the only black hole horizon. But in one dimension higher, the list gets s slightly bigger. But it, this is a very important list in three-dimensional manifold geometry. So, and and as you know, in in the Thurston program, program. So, uh, so so you see that the so. The, our, our motivation, the you know, Weinstein and Curie and myself are interested in this project because because of this list. So we are not interested in uh, from physical side, but we're interested because the black hole horizon has this non-spherical horizon, and then we, perhaps we can say something about the, the geometry of those manifolds using this Einstein vacuum Einstein equation. Okay, so let me go on. And then, uh, so there are known examples. So let me start with a trivial one, the Minkowski space, okay? And then uh, Meyer, uh, Meyer's Perry space time. This is the, uh, the straightforward generalizations of this uh, car solution in three plus one. Okay, so, you, so car solution is a Schwarzschild root with a twist. So as you go in, in, evolve in time, then the, the Schwarzschild is rotating, okay? And then that's curl, and that's in 5D, you have S3 horizon, and then it's uh, twisting, okay? And then twist has two different ways, like phi 1 and phi 2. So both, both ways it, can, it could twist, and that's a 5D uh, dimensional curl. So I shouldn't say straightforward generalization, because of course it's not that trivial to come up with a, the exact solution for the Myers Perry. And then Emperor Real, this is 2003, was a, a extremely. Uh, 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 a uh, big surprise uh, made a big impact on, 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 on the physic physical community because this was the first exact solution uh, ex explicitly found in 5D which has non-spherical horizon in a vacuum, okay, in a vacuum, okay. So S2 cross S1 horizon and then, uh, and then people got excited and then Pomeransky and Senkov has shown that uh, black ring, uh, it, it looks the same but then uh, what you, what, what you have is the Emperor Real, what he did is that the, you have S2 and then you have, you have S1, okay? And then you can, you can think naively that when you have this donut shape, then donut can collapse because the, the Einstein theory is the, the theory of attraction, right? So they attract each other. So, so usually it, it collapses to, to become a sphere. But then what, what they did is they, twi uh, they uh, gave a spin in this direction, it's one direction, so that that prevents from collapsing, okay? And then uh, Pomeransky Senkov did is that in addition to this spin, they also gave a spin this way, okay? And that's the, uh, the Pomeransky Senkov. And then uh, Ervang and Figueras is a black Saturn, okay? So Saturn is that you have this S3 and then you have this ring around it, okay? And, and then, uh, so, so that's also, so, so there's a kind of balancing going on. And then uh, Kunduri and Ricciati and Nozawa and Tomizawa, which is a bit different from VEE, vacuum Einstein equation. It's not vacuum, it's a supersymmetry. It's, uh, it's like an uh, uh, Einstein-Maxwell equation, but it's slightly different. And then, uh, in, in, so, so the right-hand side of the Einstein equation is no longer zero. And under that condition, they created this uh, non-spherical horizon. So to this day, uh, there's no lens, lens, lens space horizon, RP3 or LPQ horizon, in VEE setting, okay? So that's the, the situation. So let's go back to where we are, except the dimension has gone up by one now. So there you have a three-dimensional symmetry. So you have this time symmetry and you have two axial symmetry. And then if you mod out by this three-dimensional regroup, then you're left with half space, okay? So, so schematically it's this, except that now I, it's been uh, upgraded to this, okay? So, uh, and then phi, phi one and phi two, okay? So you see that the, what you have is that you have this torus, two-dimensional torus at each point. So uh, uh, times the, the time, of course. But then uh, uh, each point on the half space is really representing a shape of a torus, okay? And then, uh, Raw or greater than zero or Which one? Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, you, you're right. You're, you're, you're very good at pointing out the <laughs> stupid okay. mistake. Okay. Yeah, thank you. So, so it's, it's Z is in, in here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
sorry. So, so that's rho and then that's z. Okay. And then, uh, uh, right, so, so one of the things I didn't uh, emphasize here is that it's, it's this. So if you look at this 2 by 2 matrix, if you look at 2 by 2 matrix, the determinant of this is you have 2 and minus 2, so they cancel. The determinant uh, of this is minus rho square, and then you take the absolute value, square root, it's rho. Okay? So this is not just any arbitrary, uh, 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 arbitrary coordinate system, but it's a very convenient one. And then rho turns out to be a harmonic function. So, so I, I won't get into that technicality, but there are many good things happening for, for this cylindrical uh, coordinate system. They call it var coordinate for the good reason. And then, uh, so, so the situation is this. You, so you have this half space, the isothermal coordinate, uh, conformal factor, and you have this metric restricted to the, the fiber, the isom uh, isometric group, group fiber. Okay? So now it's a 3 by 3 matrix. It's Lorentzian because it's the time here. It's a Lorentzian uh, and then 3 by 3 matrix. And then once again, what's happening is that the, uh, everything is a uh, function of rho and z. And then, uh, and then uh, determinant of this 3 by 3 matrix uh, absolute value on square root is equal to rho. Okay? And then uh, define on, 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 on this, this space time minus the z axis. Okay, so let's uh, play with something very uh, familiar. So this is the, uh, the, uh, Lorentz, uh, the Minkowski metric in five dimension. So this is uh, S3, and then you have this uh, 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 radial direction. So this is the Euclidean four-dimensional four -dimensional Euclidean metric. Okay? And then I write down this three-dimensional metric in this so-called Hopf coordinate. Okay, so Hopf coordinate. Uh, so you, you can think of this S3 being foliated by torus. So you, you, you th theta changes from 0 to pi over 2. So you see that you have phi 1 and phi 2. So if this is a constant, this is constant, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a metric on the torus. Okay? And then as theta changes from 0 to pi over 2, you have this different size torus. And that's this uh, shape. Oh, okay, it's this shape. So you see that the uh, you, you can think of this as R3, but if you compactify top and bottom, it's S3. Okay? So S3 is foliated by uh, uh, different size torus, and then torus can degenerate to a circle here and circle here. Okay? So, so, so it's, a, it's a singular foliation of the S3 uh, is being represented in, 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 in this, this expression, right? When theta is equal to 0 and theta is equal to pi over 2, the, the torus uh, degenerate to the circle. Okay, and then uh, move, move terms around, and then you see that the, you, you write this way and then this way. So this, is the, this part is the gij, because this is the, the time symmetry, axial symmetry, axial symmetry. Put them together, I, I, put, I write down gij, and then the remaining part is the half, half plane. Okay, but what's happening is that the, uh, maybe I'm going too slow here, but R4, so R4 is R2 cross R2. And then if you divide by U1 square, then what you get is R plus R plus. So it's the first quadrant, okay? So this is the, the quotient space of R4 by this symmetry. But then we're interested in, in a half space model. So just do, do the Riemann mapping. So make it ha uh, the half space. So that's, the, uh, that's the, uh, uh, this, this thing. Okay? And then do the change of variable. Okay? So you, you get this uh, var coordinate system for the Minkowski metric. And then, uh, then what's uh, happening is that the road structure looks like this. Rod structure looks like this, and then I, I write it down 1, 0, and 0, 1. Okay? The reason for 1, 0 is that because norm of del del phi 2 goes to 0 as rho goes to 0, and here the norm of del del phi 2 goes to 0 as rho goes to 0. And that's exactly the, uh, so this is the uh, phi 1 symmetry and this is phi 2 symmetry. So you, you have this uh, R2 and you have R2. Maybe, maybe, maybe it's this, 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 you have R2 and you have phi 1, you have phi 2. 
phi 2, okay. And then this is the corner. So this is the corner. The corner is exactly this, okay. So, so the so z axis has split into two parts when one part, the top part is where, where this, this, this killing vector field degenerate, the, the bottom part is where this killing vector degenerate, and this is the corner. Okay? So that's uh, the rod structure, and then I, I should be, uh, if you draw this semicircle, this is S3. This is S3 of the, uh, the radius r because what you have here is you have to torus, you have each point on the half space is a torus. So torus is being accumulated, and then here you have S1, here you have S1. And that's the, the picture I showed you here. Here, okay? So, 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 so th those tor tori are all the interior points of the semicircle, and at two ends you have this degenerate tori, okay? And then uh, you have this foliation of the R4 by this. Uh, by this picture. Okay, so let's see. Yeah, so up to now I have said nothing about the PDE, the differential equation, which is a rich flat. Uh, so we want to write down the, uh, the rich flat condition, the, the G, the Lorentzia metric satisfying the, 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 the rich, 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 rich curvature is equal to zero. Okay, so you write it down in, the, in this, this bio coordinate system, then you, this is what you get. Okay, this is what you get. And then it turns out that the, uh, the, the second and third equation uh, is a quadrature, and they, you can always find the potential new provided that the first, con first equation is satisfied. Okay, so the first equation is the integrability condition and the second third condition. Okay, and then the first, first equation, which depends on rho and z, but they, then if you introduce this dummy variable phi, then you can identify the, the right uh, left hand the differential operator here as the Laplacian of R3. Okay? Laplacian of R3. So what, what happened is that actually the punchline is that the first equation, the first equation, this equation can be identified as the harmonic map equation for uh, where the domain is R3, you, uh, expressed in a, in a polar coordinate system, rho, z, and phi, where phi is the dummy variable. Uh, and then uh, into a point in SL3R over SO3, okay? And then uh, G, so this, this point, G is determined by this, this, this three by three matrix, okay? So I'll show you how it's determined. Uh, it's, it's done by physicists. And then, uh, so, so the, uh, let me say that the, uh, uh, I'm running out of time, but the punchline is that the, uh, you see that the Einstein equation is known to be a wave equation. So, the, so you have this box operator minus dt square plus the Laplacian. Okay. So the uh, the Einstein equation is a kind of a complicated uh, equation, but it, you can if you if you choose the right gauge, you can write it down as a is, is a is a quasi linear uh, wave wave equation. And then if you have a stationarity condition, which is the time uh, time symmetry, then you can just knock it off. Okay. You can knock it off, and then you're left with elliptic variational problem, and that's why, in in, in a morally speaking, you can get this 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 harmonic map. Ha, ha, you have this the the Riemannian uh, elliptic variational problem uh, substituting the the Einstein equation. Okay, so that's why the the, the stationarity is 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 the, the kind of tool which reduces this hyperbolic equation to the elliptic equation. So that's the uh, the kind of a uh, uh, lesson. Okay, let's see. Let me see. I'm running out of time. Okay, yeah, thank you. <laughs> so, uh, right, so let me say in uh, curl metric, the curl metric case is that the, uh, I, I'm going down to the 3 plus 1. Uh, 3 plus 1 situation. So it's a little bit, uh, so the dimension is, is, is a classical, but then has a, in, in addition to Cheval's shield, has a twist. Okay, it has a twist. The twist is tell, tells you that the killing vector dd phi is no longer hypersurface orthogonal. So you have a killing vector and you have orthogonal uh, uh, three-dimensional uh, subspace and that's no longer integrable. Okay, that's no longer integrable. And to measure the non-integrability uh, is, 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 is this, this phi, the Ernst potential called y. Okay, and then x is the norm of dd phi square. 
Okay, so you see that uh, x goes to zero means that you're approaching to the axial symmetry. And then y goes to zero means that you're approaching to the, station, uh, to the static case. Okay? And then if you put x and y, to, uh, 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 and, uh, and then you can you, you write down this, this the var coordinate system using x and y, so y, y is hidden here. Y is a twist. So, so omega uh, is containing information. Uh, you see that in order to uh, solve uh, so dy is equal to this. So you have to you have to integrate once to get y. So the y information about y is hi hidden here, and then it turns out that this vacuum Einstein equation is equivalent to the harmonic map in from the R three minus the z axis into the hyperbolic space. Okay, which uh, and then the, and and g is g, which is a point here. It, it looks like this. Okay, so remember x is the norm of the Killing vector field, y is the, the measure which measures the, the deviation from a hypersurface orthogonal, okay? And then what's important is that the, as you, so this is the, the upper half space model. Okay, this is the upper half space model because this is the, uh, the Poincaré uh, upper half space model. And then x goes to zero means that if you approach to, to, the, to the axial uh, uh, symmetry, uh, the axial symmetric, uh, symmetry axis, okay? So the norm is going down to zero. Then this point goes up, goes out to the infinity, geometric infinity. So remember that what Vau did. Vau did is that he identified the Minkowski space with the Green's function where the, the axis is, is where the, the log law goes to minus infinity, right? So, so it's the same thing is happening here, right? When you approach to the, uh, the, uh, the rotational symmetry, the axis of rotational symmetry, then the point, corresponding point, is going off to the infinity of here, no longer a number, but it's, 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 a, it's a point in the symmetric space. Okay? If y is equal to zero, if y is equal to zero, it becomes uh, diagonal, and then you reduce to the vial situation. Okay? So, uh, but it, it's, 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 there's no, no reason. I mean, I, I showed you what, uh, what Vial did, and this is a kind of a souped up version uh, done by Carter in the late 60s. Okay, so here we go. We are, we are, we are back at uh, 4 plus 1. So we have this 3 by 3 matrix. So you have this dt uh, minus dt square, and then you have this thing. So this fij is giving you, uh, fij, so fij is giving you is that the, uh, I have this picture. You see the point in T2, the, the torus, uh, a point in, uh, uh, in the half plane it represent T2. And if you approach to the Z axis, what happens is the rho goes to zero. Okay? But remember what rho is. Rho was exactly the determinant of this 3 by 3 matrix. So this 3 by 3 matrix, which is non-degenerate here, degenerate as you approach to, 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 the, to the Z axis. And what happens is, what, what it means geometrically is that one of the uh, simple closed curve on this T2 get, uh, vanishes to a point. Okay? Vanishes to a point. But the, as you can see, that uh, unlike in, 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 in uh, 3 plus 1, in 3 plus 1, they only have one U1. Right? So you have circle, and circle can only uh, degenerate to a point in one way. Okay? But in T2, there, there, there are many different uh, simple cross curves. Okay? And then uh, we, we already show here, right? So we, we, we already show that the, in the Minkowski space, you have this meridian and longitude curve. Right? So if the meridian curve goes down to zero, then you get this axis. The longitude, longitude curve of the torus goes to zero, then you get this curve, and they meet at the corner. Okay, so so you see that Fij uh, is containing information exactly how how the torus degenerate as you approach to, to the z-axis, and then uh, the uh, the point in a symmetric space is like look like this. So one over f tells you that the uh, f f here is the determinant of this two by two matrix Fij. Okay, so so if the torus degenerate to a circle, then f is is sure to go to zero. Okay, so so once again, this point goes off to the geometric infinity of the symmetric space. Okay, uh, right. So let me recap uh, then the, what we did. So what we have is that you have space time and you have three dimensional uh, Lie group acting, and then quotient space is the half plane. Okay, uh, I got it right here. 
GIJ is a Lorentzian metric on, on uh, uh, which is the restriction to the to the, the to the isometric <laughs> isometric group, and G GIJ is a C infinity non singular on the half space, but it degenerates as you approach to the z axis. Okay, and the way it degenerates uh, uh, has a two different way. So so let me say two different scenario. One is space like, and the other one is light like. Space-like is exactly the torus goes to that, down to, to S1, right? So one, the torus degenerate, one, one of the, uh, the simple closed curve vanishes in, in length so that you're left with circle. So that's uh, the second situation. And the light-like is, 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 is this situation, Schwarzschild situation in, in, in this uh, vertical uh, arrow. So that the, uh, the, 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 the GIJ degenerate in a sense that you have this there are uh, the eigenvalue zero vector, uh, eigenvector, which is light like uh, ruling the, uh, the, the black hole horizon. Okay, so, so, so uh, you see that the, all these uh, conditions together uh, gives you a so called rod structure. So, rod structure is how the, uh, uh, the, the z axis being partitioned. But, uh, so that the part, part of it is where the, uh, the torus has degenerated, part of it is a uh, horizon. Horizon uh, signifies the location of the uh, event horizon, uh, the, the black hole horizon. Okay, so let's see. Um, so let me show, show you. So, so this is the rod structure. So, so the, uh, if you don't have this zero, zero, and this is the, this picture. This is the Minkowski space. And then if you have one zero here and zero one here, you have dot dot dot. Okay. So what's here is that you have this each point on this dot is a torus. So you have this uh, torus being accumulated on top of each other, and up here you have uh, torus has degenerated s one, and up there, up, uh, up down here, the tor torus has degenerated to s one. If you put them together, so but you see that the 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 s the the S1 here and S1 here are different. How are they different? It's, it's this. It's this, okay? So, so you have S1 here and you have S1 here, okay? You have S1 here. So this is the shape. This is the picture of the black hole horizon uh, which appears in this rod, rod picture. So this is t uh, torus, 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 and you have uh, singular uh, torus and you have singular torus. Put them together, you have S3. Okay. How about here? What you have here is that one zero and one zero. So those are the where the, the norm of norm of this oh, sorry, this is one. Norm of this killing vector field goes to zero. Okay? And then uh, so you have this S1, uh, S1, and you have this S1. And then uh, here the, the vanishing cycle here and the vanishing cycle here is the same, okay? Vanishing cycle here and vanishing cycle here are the same. So you see that this, at this point, you have this circle, sorry, it's, it's very small, goes to zero uh, to a point here and there. So, so, so this point and this point are the, the, the result of the same circle degenerating. And then resulting thing is S2. So that's how you get this dot 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 this this dotted uh, segment is S1 cross S2, okay? And what's a, how you get the length space? Length space is you have one zero and you have one p. One p means that you, you want to think of a closed curve that if you uh, by if you go around once in, in this this way, then you have to go around p times this way, okay? So that's what the the one p means, the integral curve, okay? So you see that the, you have this torus, 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 and then uh, up here you, you, you make this circle goes to a point, and down here you make this circle goes to a point. And then you resulting, uh, re resulting three manifold is the length space. And the length space is, is this. So you, this is the uh, picture of the sphere. So you see that you have this, you have this tori, you have this tori being foliated, and then in the middle, you have this singular tori, okay? On the outside, this, this outside of this toilet paper, the, the very outside, you, you don't have this uh, height. You, please think, consider this height as a point, okay? Height as a point. So you have, th this is S1, 
this is S1. So, so, so the, the, this is the same picture. You, you see you have, a, you have S1 top and bottom identified, and then you have this S1 here, okay? And then in the middle, you have this tora, uh, torus, okay? And then, uh, so this is S3, and then what I do is I divide in a vertical direction into Q portion, and then in, in, in this horizontal direction, P portion, okay? And then uh, you identify, when you identify, you, uh, you twist, okay? And then you, what you get is that I'm identifying this top and bottom, and then you get this uh, three manifold without singularity, which is the ZP, uh, ZP quotient of S3, and that's a length space, LP1, okay? So, so the, you have torus, 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 and top and bottom, you have a singular fiber, and this is the black hole horizon, which is of the shape of length space, okay? And then uh, it, 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 there's a corner here, and there's a corner here, okay? And then the black lens Saturn, I'm just playing around uh, with no time left, but, but you see they have one zero, one zero, so this is S2 cross S1, and you have one zero and one P, so this is LP, uh, the lens. So you have lens, and you have this ring around it. So I call it, uh, we call black lens Saturn, okay? So what we did is that the, the main theorem is that the, uh, Everything I talked about is that the rod structure. So how the rod structure is basically the uh, if you write down the uh, the Lorentzian metric uh, given the symmetry uh, in this form. Okay. So the rod structure is encoded in this. So G I J degenerate as rho approaches to zero as you approaches to uh, to z axis, and the degeneration tells you the topological type of the, uh, uh, of the, uh, of, of the, the space-time, okay? But in, in terms of the uh, PDE, uh, it's, it's, uh, so, so the GIJ is degenerating such that you have a non-trivial corner appearing corresponds to harmonic map, harmonic map which is going off to infinity in a, in a target, okay? So that, that corresponds to, in the very beginning, I talked about the pole of Green's function, right? The Green's function blows up as you approach to the, to the axis. So it, so it corresponds to the, the point goes off to inf geometric infinity of the symmetric space. So, so the road structure can be, think, can be uh, identified as an asymptotic Dirichlet, uh, Dirichlet uh, condition for the harmonic map uh, problem. Okay? So the, given the road structure, we can solve the asymptotic Dirichlet problem such that we can get the harmonic map, and once you get the harmonic map, solving the quadrature, you can get the whole metric, and you, we are left with the stationary solution for the 4 plus 1 uh, dimensional vacuum Einstein equation. Okay, and then uh, I said that the, uh, here, you have 1, 0, and 0, 1. So 1, 0, and 0, 1 was the, uh, <coughs> the this Minkowski space. So you, if you go very far away, then you, 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 it looks like Minkowski space. So that, that's called asymptotically flat, okay? So very far away from the gravitational collapse, things are very uh, quiet, almost like Minkowski space. Okay, so that's the, uh, this thing. So you have 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, it's all 1, 0, 0, 1. So, so those are the rod structure for the asymptotically flat. But instead of 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, you have 1, 0, for example, 1, 0. The, what you have is that asymptotically the structure is S1 cross S2 cross real axis, okay? So that's called Caruza Klein, okay? So that's called Caruza Klein. And then in, instead of this S1 cross S1, asymptotically, uh, you can have a, a length space. That's called uh, asymptotically locally Euclidean, okay? So, so you can just play with uh, different uh, asymptotic con condition, and then you can co we can cover all, all these three types and then solve the asymptotic Dirichlet problem, and then find the vacuum Einstein equation. Okay, so uh, let me say, so, so, but the, we, we are not done yet. So, so what we have left at this point is that the, so that there may be singularity along the z-axis, okay? So that, so, so, so that the, uh, when, for example, when you have a finite rod like this, okay? So we can, we can find the Lorentzian metric uh, very close to the rod, but then not on the rod, because uh, the cylindrical coordinate system is not defined, well, it's not, defi it, it's not one to one when rho is equal to zero, okay? So th there you could have a conical singularity, 
So conical singularity. Uh, and then uh, we had to get rid of that. And actually, Weil, Hermann Weil was a was, uh, very uh, smart guy. And then what he did is that he noticed that the Schwarzschild metric can be, is determined by harmonic function. Harmonic function is linear. OK, linear, great. Superpose them. OK, so he put, he, he put two Schwarzschild uh, solutions on top of each other. OK, and then, then the, the sum of harmonic function is harmonic. So it still satisfies this Einstein equation. And then, so what's wrong with it? Because you, if you have two Schwarzschild, Schwarzschild black hole, they, you, you, you expect that they will attract each other and they collide, right? So you can't get the static solution, OK? So dynamically non-trivial situation you, you expect. So what happens is that the, the, there is a rod between those two, two black holes, and you have a singularity. You have a conical singularity. So that carries energy, OK? So, so that's, that explains, so, so they did even further. The Weyer and Bach did is when you pull them apart and apart, asymptotically, this, this singularity describes a Newtonian uh, force between these two, two objects, OK? So in that sense, Newton, Newton was right in, in, the sense of, in this sense. Uh, and then, so, so you see that the, what we, we need to do is that this, this uh, Right, so, so I said that I, what we did by uh, incorporating this, uh, this cylindrical coordinate is that we did stupid thing. We wrote down 0 is equal to e to the minus infinity, okay? Right, so because of that, I mean, the, 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 there's nothing wrong with 0. But then by writing down e to the minus infinity, we have to deal with this, this conical singularity. And then uh, physically, uh, that carries some energy. So we want to find, find we have to play with uh, some parameter, finite, finite dimensional parameter, such that the those singularity can be uh, removed. Okay, so that's that's the, that's what we need to do. So so Weierbach is exactly what I, I showed you, and the n and rail uh, uh, was able to remove that singularity because the the, the solution is explicit. Okay, explicit. Okay, and then uh, last thing I like to mention is that the, with Yukio Matsumoto, we are able to uh, describe the topological type of this uh, domain of auto communication. So domain of auto communication is exactly where we can send signal to each other outside of the black hole, OK? And then, uh, and then you, ha you, ha you have to divide by, so five dimensional space time, but then uh, let's uh, take a quotient by the time, time, R1. So you elect a four dimensional manifold. Four dimensional manifold and then it has a black hole, has, has black hole horizon and also end. But we, we don't. Uh, but but those are those are end and black holes are, are, are holes. So we fill them. We we fill them up, and we end up with a simply connected four-dimensional manifold. And that resulting four-dimensional manifold is one of those types. Okay. And then we could uh, the the way we we we, could, we construct this four-dimensional manifold is explicit using so-called the plumbing construction. Which is the by uh, taking a it's a way of taking a union of disk bundle over S two. Okay, so so this is. Uh, let me draw uh, one picture, and then I'll finish. The <coughs> when you have a when you have a axis rod, okay, you have a you have axis rod M N P Q R S, okay, and then uh, what happens is that if you think of this area. This area is exactly the disk bundle over uh, uh, disk bundle over S2 because here it's S2, and then here it's two-dimensional disk. Okay, it's a two-dimensional disk, and then the the total space of the disk bundle is four-dimensional manifold. So what you can do is that if you you, you, you can kind of consecutively put them together, and then if you uh, you, you paste this uh, disk bundle to this, this, this bundle, and pasting is done here. And that pasting is called the plumbing construction. Right? The plumbing means that the, you have two pipes, and then you, you, you intersect them. Okay? And the, so there's a canonical way of doing this. So the, uh, the in early 70s, the people, uh, topologists called Ulrich and Raymond, uh, were, uh, looked at this uh, uh, torus action on the form for a simply connected four manifold, and by using this, uh, we are able to describe this this uh, space time uh, the structure topological structure of the sp space time we, we constructed using this rod structure, and then uh, 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 did this. Okay, so um, right. So 
one of the things that, 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 that maybe in last minus 10 seconds, uh, <laughs> the, the technically the hardest thing to do in, for us is that the, uh, uh, to, to, to get rid of, uh, to, to deal with this uh, geometry of this uh, symmetric space, this. So this is a five dimensional symmetric space of rank two. So when you, when you have a higher rank, you have a flat, two dimensional flat. So you have less convexity. So when you to try to find a harmonic map, you have less convexity, so it can escape to infinity easier. So so we had to deal with that. And then so so and in order to do so, we had to find the uh, uh, right uh, coordinate system, so called the uh, the holospherical coordinate system. And then, uh, and then uh, using the so-called Iwasawa decomposition uh, gave us a good coordinate system. And then using that, we, we could capture the, the harmonic map. And then, and then this, this, is the, this is the picture for the uh, Dirichlet problem, okay? So the, 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 the Dirichlet problem, is, Dirichlet condition is assigned, uh, prescribed to, on the <laughs> axis rod, okay? And then you take the uh, epsilon neighborhood of the axis rod, and then one of the epsilon neighborhood away from the axis, and then you solve this uh, Dirichlet problem using some approximate harmonic map solution. And then you let epsilon goes to zero, you have a sequence of map, and then show that converges to the harmonic map. Okay. So, so that's, that's, that's it. Thank you. One question. So, in this picture where we have two, in the, can you move it a bit up, Lawrence? Yeah. So, where we have a, a set of tori is a degenerate circle, right? Mm -hmm. But what if we, instead of going to the this line, we get straight to the singularity, right? Like, Here? Yeah, right, from the right, go straight to this point. Then, with, as far as I said, everything degenerates to a Yeah, point. right, yeah, yeah, right. But what if we do it in different directions and somehow scale? Can I get some limiting shape of some tori? Uh, so if we go <laughs> tori, not from vertical, from up or from down, but uh -huh. from right, say. Yeah, uh, I, I'm sure you can, but I, 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 I uh, it's, it's, it didn't bother us. I mean that question. Yeah, yeah. But, but maybe, maybe. I mean, the, the, maybe there's a kind of pathological path you can take, and then that may have some geometric meaning, but not for us. Yeah. Any more questions? So I would like to ask uh, concerning uh, the use of Iwasawa decomposition. So oh, okay. You just uh, uh, so it, it, this was supposed to be used for the proof of the last theorem. Yeah. Yes, uh, the main theorem. Yeah. So so everything is is an archive and, and they they will be published now. Uh, so uh, right. So the. It was how the composition is that the, this this SL three is d described this way, and A is giving you uh, the flat, okay? And so you can think of this X, the symmetric space, as the uh, the foliated by flat, mm -hmm. and the flats have the uh, same asymptotic uh, convert um, behavior. Okay, they, they they meet at the at the point in the bar chamber. I mean at the at the, the tits building. Okay, and then so you, you you have this fan of flats. Okay, and then that gives you uh, the coordinate system that we used. Okay, so we 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 didn't like the flat direction, so we wanted to concentrate on 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 this uh, perpendicular direction to the flat, and that 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 was given by this n. Okay, uh, n capital n. N yeah capital n. Mm -hmm. N is the 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 uh, the parabolic subgroup. Do you need uh, yeah, unipotent, unipotent, yes. Yeah. So, 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 so using that, we are able to, uh, so this is the, the metric on the flat, direc flat, direc uh, the flat, the direction of flats, and then this is the direction perpendicular to that. And then, uh, and then we needed to get the estimates on the Christoffel symbol. So, so, so this is the, basically the Christoffel symbol, and then we had to show that the Christoffel symbol don't, uh, blow down or up, okay. And then that gave us uh, control over the, over the behavior of a harmonic map. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Are there any more questions? If not, then let's thank the speaker again. Thank you.